You've heard of the man who went out and bought a boomerang. Says he decided he wanted to have some fun. So he bought the boomerang and threw it out in the air. And of course, it circled in an arc and came back to him. And great fun. So he threw it out again, learned how to handle it right, threw the boomerang out, circled up in the sky, came back to him again, picked it up. Did this for a long time, had great fun with the boomerang, which always came back to him. Then he tried to throw it away because he got tired of it. And the boomerang came back, and he wanted to throw it away again. But it was in the nature of the boomerang to come back, so it kept coming back to him. He couldn't get rid of it. Now, I'm looking at you, and you're looking at me. And here's the question. What is the boomerang in your life that you're trying to throw away, but it keeps coming back to you? Doesn't it? Of course it does. And you've got a thousand exercises in your mental arms to throw that boomerang out, and the next morning it's there again. Shall I tell you what it is? A major one. You can all nod your heads internally to this. What you're trying to push away from you, and you've never succeeded up till now in doing, what you're trying to get rid of desperately is self-doubt. Right? Haven't you noticed how your mind churns around all during the day? And at certain times, certain times you have what is called feeling good. You feel a little bit secure because some external event or some thought of your own comes up and you think for a little bit that you've solved the problem or that heartache, that pain, that memory, that self-accusation. You think you've solved the problem. You think you've thrown it away finally. But it is, it is never in the nature of the heartache to go away the way you're trying to get rid of it. See, the evidence of our wrong behavior in life, of our wrong actions, the evidence is so clear, so much right in front of us. The evidence being, the evidence being, and you know it, that you have not solved your problems. No matter what you've done, no matter how you kid yourself about it, if you've got rid of one problem, it's simply because you traded it for a second one. Therefore, the fundamental self-doubt remains. And you know how much we've talked about man's false identity, that he picks up a sense of self, a wrong sense of self, from becoming successful or, and listen to this, or from suffering. And he says, well, I'm a suffering human being at least. Maybe I'm a martyr. And so a man and a woman seeks a thousand ways to get an identity, hoping that one out of the 10,000 or 50,000 will be permanent, and it never will as long as you are under the hoax that you presently are. Something drastic is going to have to be initiated by you. What's going to have to happen is for you to meet someone or something who is unlike you. I said you're going to have to meet someone who's unlike you so that you can listen to something that is not a part of your present nature. And oh, what a difficulty we're in now. You see, whether you're aware of it or not, you always associate, cling with, flock together with thoughts, other people, events, experiences that are already like you. You associate with the familiar. You associate with your old thoughts, your own aims, your own fallacies. You associate, in short, with everything that is already like you, with your friends with your relatives, with your ambitions. And the last thing most human beings want to find is a man, a woman, a circumstance, a truth 
that is unlike themselves. They don't want that at all. That's the last thing they want is to find something that is different because then that means a challenge to their false sense of certainty that they already have it made and know what it's all about in spite of all the evidence. When you meet truth, a particle of it, when you meet it for the first time, there's a sensing from your old nature that you are meeting something that is unlike you and you begin to get nervous and you want to push it away and you want to run away and you want to find excuses and justifications for not wanting what you have encountered because you think that it's a threat to you and how incredible that a human being will push away the very one thing, the one thing that could rescue him because he's afraid that it's going to hurt him. Not seeing, not seeing that his hurt is in remaining as he is. Isn't your, isn't your Monday a repetition of Sunday and a Sunday a repetition of Saturday? And then forward through the week again, isn't everything exactly the same? You know very well it is. You know that you have nothing new in your life. You, you have nothing solid to stand on. And that self-doubt keeps nagging at you, keeps making you cry. All right. Where is the problem? Now you listen carefully and don't assume that you already understand what I'm going to say. That would push away the real reward that you'll get from it. In your present incorrect thinking, which is there, otherwise you wouldn't suffer as much from hostility, from fear, and so on. In your incorrect thinking, you actually believe that the problem is out there. You actually believe that the difficulty is in that condition or in that past condition or in that wife or in that husband or in the boss, you will do anything to cling to this self-deception that the problem exists out there. Because if you were to suspect the truth that the problem is, now listen, is if you were to suspect that the problem is 100% yours, that means, that means responsibility on your part, doesn't it? That means a jolt. That means you're going you're gonna to be hit very hard because you are going to have to give up actually millions of thoughts from the past in which you say that that other person, because of his behavior, that is why I am in heartache. That is why I have self-doubt. All the time, all their lives, most human beings insist absolutely that the world is at fault, and if it would change, they would feel better. Well, the world is changing all the time out there. How come you don't feel better? Self-doubt must continue to haunt you until you understand that the self you're trying to find security for is non-existent. You're trying to build up a, a system of ideas about yourself that you hope will feel solid and it can never happen. Only the absence of all uh, acquired ideas, opinions about yourself, only the absence of those can ever change anything, which you'll see for yourself as you go along with things. Because human beings have not found themselves, because they have not emptied themselves of all their thoughts, all their ideas, follow this. They go into a, a dreadful pain which I will describe to you. I'm describing your life. They go into a dreadful pain called wrong seriousness. 
Look how dull you are with your kind of seriousness, what you call earnestness, what you call intensity. You're wasting your life with the kind of serious aims you now have because they are all wrapped around you perpetuating the hoax by which you have lived and suffered up until now. If you could begin to see through, just tonight, begin to see how all your so-called serious ideas are simply one or another form of depression. If you could see that what you call being earnest is a form of despondency and gloom based on delusion, if you could see that, you would begin to break out from going from darkness to a beautiful sunshine. Let me, let me tell you a story that will show what we're talking about. Here's a businessman, and he's told about a piece of property that is supposed to be very valuable out in the country, let's say. And so he goes out there, and when he gets out there, there's the real estate man waiting for him. And he shows him around the house and shows him around the large area, there's hills in back. And all the time that the real estate salesman is showing him around the house and the property, other possible clients are also being shown around. So there's a lot of people looking over the property. And the man is told how valuable it is and that the price is quite reasonable and you better get it right away before someone else buys it. And he sees the other buyers there. And the price, pretty high, but uh, he, be he begins to get serious over buying the property. And he thinks he'd better get it before someone else does. And other things come up that make him want to buy it. For example, a very attractive girl comes along. She stops her car and she looks out and talks to him. She says, I live down the street. It'd be nice to have you in the neighborhood. And he looks at her and his heart flutters a little bit. And he, you see, he's already gone into imagination as people do in situations like that. Don't they? Don't you? You know what I'm talking about. And so the girl you know, smiles at him and says, nice to have you as a neighbor. Be sure you buy the house. Other things, sort of things like that happen, which make him think that he better buy it fast before someone else does. So after three or four hours of looking around, it's quite a large bit of property, he drives back to the village where he's staying overnight and goes to the motel and, he's, and is very earnest about thinking about buying it. And he's worried about losing it. And he remembers the girl and he remembers what the real estate man said, that it will increase in value in six months. You better get it now. He goes out to dinner shortly after that and sits at a booth at the back of the cafe <coughs> and has his dinner. And as he has it, as he's having his dinner, he begins to, he hears, actually hears the voice of this girl that he met. And she's talking with a man, and he suddenly realizes that they're in the, right, the next booth, and they can't see him because of the partition. Are you ahead of me? Yeah. Why aren't you ahead of yourself in life then? See, you can follow a story when it's an illustration, when someone tells you, but you walk right into the same situations yourself because you're carried away by your old nature. So is he sits there and listens, the light begins to dawn, doesn't it? And here's what he realizes. The whole thing was a con game. The whole thing was a hoax set up for the very purpose of drawing him in, making him think that some, he's going to get something valuable, and if he didn't get it, that he'd, he'd lose out. And by the way, do you understand that the fear of loss is one of the most persistent naggings that we have. What do you have that you value now? I'll guarantee you, if you're not living from who you really are, one of your doubts is going to center around you losing that. Someone younger coming along and taking your place down at the office. Someone coming along and taking 
your property or whatever it might be. You might go home tonight and ask yourself what you fear losing and investigate that to see where you have got something all mixed up, where you have identified with your possession, that is, you think it gives you an identity, and the thought of losing this or that causes you to shake, only it really isn't you shaking at all, it's simply some thoughts that you take as being you. But back to the man in the booth. He sits there and it dawns on him, of course, that the whole thing was a show a theatrical production, all the other people walking around, all calculated to deceive him into buying the property at a price where he would lose his money. Now, I want you to listen to me. You won't understand what I'm going to say. It's much too enormous. It's much too overwhelming. But you can hear the words, you can hear the description. And then you could go home and you begin to ponder it and apply it personally to you because you've all been taken in. You've all been deceived to, to the depth which you do not know. And I'll tell you where you've been deceived. It's going to be too much. I've warned you. And I'm going to tell you. Your whole life, your whole life is a hoax. You have believed what people tell you. You've fallen for the attractions. You think if you don't do this, you're going to miss out. And do you know that it's a very rare human being who ever sits in the spiritual booth, so to speak, and right in front of him, he hears the hoax being exposed. It is happening tonight. I am telling you about the entire life situation that you are involved in, and you, today and yesterday and 10 years ago, you walked around that property and you listened to what the people said, and you were gullible. And you wanted to believe certain things. You wanted to believe that you're going to get a bargain or whatever. Only all the con men, there are only a, a very few in that story. But everyone you met in your life has deceived you in one way or another because they were just as lost as you were. It is time for you to wake up and see, put two things together, put through the idea of wrong seriousness, false earnestness. Wasn't the man serious or in earnest about getting that? And wasn't he suffering from fear of loss? You put all these facts together, and you will finally see that all your pain all the pressures, all the anxiety was unnecessary because you didn't see what was put over on you. You were taken over by your desires as you walked around and you saw the hill in back of the home. You, you figured out how you could use it for your personal benefit. And all the time you were thinking all these things, you didn't know because you weren't told that the very foundation of the house itself was beginning to crumble. And the man who was showing you around made sure that you didn't see that. I tell you that you have wasted your tears. You have wasted your pain. They are unnecessary because you don't need to be on the tour in the first place, you see. But you ask for it because you said, I need something, I want something, and there are plenty of con people around to offer it to you. Fact. Here's the fact. Right now, as you are listening to me, 
unknown to yourself. You don't know it. You don't know it. I am telling you that you don't see it. You are under a hoax. You're believing it. You're going along with it. You're suffering from it. And I am telling you tonight, you had better remember what you've heard because I have exposed for you. You're sitting in the booth and, and you're hearing the whole thing being um, clarified for you right in front of you. You're hearing the facts. You're seeing through it. Then are you going to go out of here? Are you going to go out of here with a new attitude that says something like this? All right. I'll, I'll look into things. I'll look into seeing where I'm anxious over something. I'll see whether that is indeed a hoax that I don't have to be anxious at all. I'm telling you, you don't have to be anxious at all because you're anxious because you have all these doubts about yourself based on a false idea of who you are. Very, very sadly, let me tell you something sad about you. I mean, too bad. It's too bad that you persist in it and keep it going. Think with me now. Have you ever noticed how you're afraid in life with other people, and in life in general? Have you ever noticed that you're afraid that you're not going to get a warm welcome? Oh, come on. Come on. Wherever you go, you hope you're going to see someone smiling at you. You hope you're going to meet someone that tells you that you're okay. Come in and be welcome. As long, as long as you want, listen, as long as you want to be welcomed by this world, you are going to be its victim because you are, first of all, the victim of your own delusions. Look where we've tracked it back to. Don't you, don't you ever, ever again Blame those people who put on the stage performance for you, as they did with that man. When you, if you blame them, and just, just to begin with, you're being dishonest, aren't you? Look, when that man walked out of that booth after hearing what he had heard, when he walked out of that booth, was he still in conflict? Did he still have any problems over worrying about whether I should buy that property or not? When he knew the facts, he was free. Likewise, when you can see what is going on inside of you that shouldn't be going on inside of you, greed and acquisitiveness, wanting to, wanting to be ahead of other people, wanting certain ideas that will give you comfort, wanting to be well... When you see what is wrong inside yourself, you'll see that the only reason people can ever deceive you is because you have first allowed yourself to be deceived by your own mind. Think of the liberty and the real quietness that is just ahead of you when you walk out of that booth having seen through the whole stage performance that you permitted other people to play on you because you wanted something from them. Oh, the, I cannot describe to you the relief you'll have. But what you can do, you can think of the pressure you have. You can think of the anxiety you have. You can think of the yearnings, the false yearnings that you have. And then I will tell you, if you want them to evaporate, they will. So never, never again ever go anywhere in this thought life. And I said anywhere. To a friend's house, to your own house, to the employment agency. Don't, don't go anywhere hoping that other people will welcome you. This means you're weak and they will know it. And the con game begins because they studied you. They looked at your eyes and they looked at your manner. And even though 
They are filled with self-doubts themselves. They can recognize you. They saw you coming. When they looked at you, they, their own self-doubt started to stir up. And they said, ah, I am going to find out who I really am by getting something from him or her, whatever they want from you. Could be a thousand things. You know that. And so they deceive you in an attempt to make themselves feel secure, but that won't work. It can never work because it could never work in your case. And so we have two pathetic human beings meeting and hurting each other. Will you learn what it means to walk through this whole world all by yourself? All by yourself, accompanied by your real nature. See, that's what it means to walk all by yourself. The same thing. Your real nature has something higher than what you were before. Do that and you can walk anywhere in complete freedom and nothing can ever harm you again.